Welcome to Defense Upcast, your weekly deep dive into the technology, strategy, and geopolitics shaping tomorrow's world. On October 19, 2025, something quietly changed the balance of power in South Asia. Most satellites can see what's on the surface, but Pakistan's new hyperspectral satellite, it can see through camouflage, it can detect underground bunkers, it can identify weapons hidden beneath tarps. It can even tell the difference between a real tank and a decoy made of plywood, and China just put it into orbit for them. This isn't about agriculture or disaster management. This is about intelligence, and it's a capability that could fundamentally shift the strategic equation between nuclear-armed rivals. To understand why this satellite matters, you need to understand the geography of paranoia. Pakistan shares a 2,012-kilometer border with India, its nuclear-armed rival since 1947. China shares a 3,380-kilometer disputed frontier with India, where tensions exploded in 2020 when hand-to-hand -hand combat killed at least 20 Indian soldiers and four Chinese troops in the Galwan Valley, and China and Pakistan, they've been strategic partners for decades, what Beijing calls an all-weather. Now that friendship has extended beyond Earth's atmosphere. Pakistan's Space and Upper Atmosphere Research Commission, or SUPARCO, launched its first satellite in 1990. But for years the program languished, underfunded, undersupported, and overshadowed by nuclear weapons development, that changed when China stepped in. Since 2006, Beijing has systematically upgraded Pakistan's space capabilities, communication satellites, remote sensing satellites, even a lunar orbiter that hitched a ride on China's Chang'e 6 mission. But the HS-1 hyperspectral satellite? That's different. Pakistan's foreign ministry called it a breakthrough for precision agriculture and environmental monitoring. They didn't mention the other applications, the ones that keep military planners awake at night. So what exactly is hyperspectral imaging, and why does it matter? A normal camera sees three colors, red, green, and blue. A multispectral satellite might see ten different wavelengths, but a hyperspectral sensor? It sees hundreds of narrow spectral. Bands across the electromagnetic spectrum from visible light to infrared, every material on Earth reflects light differently. Concrete has a unique spectral signature, so does steel, vegetation, water, and human skin. Hyperspectral sensors can identify these signatures with surgical precision. Here's what that means on a battlefield. You can detect camouflaged vehicles even if they're painted to match the terrain. You can spot freshly disturbed Earth over buried explosives or underground bunkers. You can identify specific types of metals distinguishing between aluminum decoys and actual armored vehicles. You can even detect chemical traces from missile fuel or explosives. In military terms, hyperspectral imaging excels at target detection under camouflage conditions. It's a game-changer for intelligence gathering. And here's what makes Pakistan's constellation especially potent. The HS-1 doesn't work alone. It's now part of a three-satellite system that gives Pakistan unprecedented surveillance capabilities. First, PRSCS-1 launched in July 2025. It's a synthetic aperture radar satellite, meaning it can see through clouds, darkness, and bad weather. It operates 24-7, regardless of conditions. Second, prsc -E one launched in January 2025. It provides high-resolution electro-optical imagery, sharp detailed photographs in visible light. And third, HS-1, the hyperspectral sensor that can identify what those objects actually are. Together, they form what intelligence analysts call a multimodal imaging triad. prsc one flags potential activity at night or in bad weather. HS-1 determines whether those targets are real threats or false positives and prsc -E one provides precise visual context for targeting or intelligence reporting. The result? Pakistan can now maintain continuous all-weather surveillance with sovereign. Control? No longer dependent on foreign intelligence partners for critical data, but there's a deeper strategic dimension. Remember China's role? Beijing didn't just launch these satellites. It built them. China Electronics Technology Group Corporation and Microsat China designed the spacecraft. China's Long March rockets delivered them to orbit, and Chinese ground stations likely provide telemetry support. This creates an intelligent sharing architecture that's difficult to detect and even harder to counter. Reports from May 2025 suggest that during India-Pakistan border tensions, a Chinese surveillance satellite loitered over. 
Rajasthans are precisely when Pakistani drones buzzed Indian airspace. Defense analysts believe China was feeding real-time intelligence to Pakistan's military through shared satellite data. If true, it means Pakistan isn't just gaining its own space-based ISR capability. It's plugging into China's vast orbital surveillance. Network, a constellation of over 200 intelligence satellites that already monitor the entire Indo-Pacific region, for India, this is a nightmare scenario. It means that China can provide Pakistan with targeting data, troop movements, and air defense postures in real time during any future conflict. It transforms Pakistan from a regional adversary into an extension of Chinese strategic intelligence capabilities. And India knows it. That's why the U.S. provided India with real-time satellite intelligence during the December 2022 border clash with China in Tawang, helping Indian troops repel a Chinese incursion before it escalated. The new satellite geography of South Asia is creating a cascade of alliances and counter-alliances, all orbiting silently overhead. So what happens next? Pakistan now possesses a surveillance capability that rivals those of much larger powers. The HS-1 will support everything from agricultural planning to disaster response, but its most consequential applications will be Military.India is responding. It launched Reset 2 br one in 2022, providing all-weather surveillance of Chinese military activity in Tibet and terror camps in Pakistan. The National Technical Research Organization operates NETRA, an AI-powered system that intercepts satellite communications and monitors social media for extremist activity. But India faces a two-front challenge. It must counter China along the IE line of actual control in the Himalayas while simultaneously monitoring Pakistan along the western border. Pakistan's new satellite triad, backed by Chinese intelligence support, significantly complicates that calculus. For the United States, Pakistan's deepening space partnership with China represents another node in Beijing's expanding orbital network. Washington has intensified intelligence sharing with India, providing real-time satellite data and expediting delivery of surveillance equipment, including MQ-9B drones. The message is clear. Space is now a front line in great power competition. And the Himalayas are ground zero. What's remarkable is how quietly this transformation has occurred. No dramatic announcements, no treaty violations, just methodical cooperation between strategic partners and the gradual erosion of India's intelligence advantages. Pakistan's HS-1 hyperspectral satellite represents more than technological progress. It's a symbol of how rapidly the strategic landscape is shifting. China is exporting not just satellites, but entire orbital intelligence architectures. Countries that couldn't afford space programs a decade ago now possess capabilities that can challenge regional powers. And in South Asia, where three nuclear-armed nations share contested borders, the proliferation of space-based surveillance could either prevent future conflicts through transparency or make them more likely by providing the targeting precision needed to strike first. The HS-1 launched on October 19th. It's already transmitting data. And somewhere in Islamabad and Beijing, analysts are watching, seeing things that were invisible just months ago. The question isn't whether space will define future conflicts in South Asia. It already does. The question is whether anyone can see what's coming next. Thank you.